Okay, as you can see, I've decided on the name for this now. I've still got a lot of Send Lawyers to Hell stuff left to record, but I also wanted to get back to the thing that I was starting before that blew up, because while I showed the basics of how to set up and use GZ Doom Builder bug fix in the last tutorial video, I realised I didn't do a great job of explaining the fundamentals of how Doom loads things up and what you're actually putting into your edited WAD file. So here's the idea. A WAD, like I said before, is the name for a file that contains Doom game assets, such as sprites for monsters, sounds, music, a library of textures that can be applied to surfaces, and usually the part we're most interested in, the game levels. You can see the contents of Doom2.wad scrolling past here in Slade 3. Each of these pieces of data in a WAD is called a lump, and a lump has a name and its associated data, roughly like a file on your hard drive. How a lump differs from a file is that the lumps in a wad are always read in order from top to bottom, and the position of the lumps can matter. A sprite or a sound might be just one lump, and it's read by Doom and it moves on to the next one, but a level is really made up of many different lumps. The list of things, vertices, lines and so on in the level are all stored separately, along with some pre-calculated data that makes the game not to have to do so much computation while it's running. The lump that tells Doom that this is the definition for a level doesn't actually have any data in it. It's what's called a marker, because it only has a name. When Doom wants to look up the data for map 01, it looks for this marker, and then it reads all the data in the following lumps until it gets to the next marker. If you're making a level for Doom, you don't really need to know all the details of what lumps are in it, because the map editor that you're using will handle making them for you, but it's useful to know how the internals of the water are laid out so that you can understand what you're doing when you make a mod for Doom. What we've been talking about so far is an example of an iWAD, or internal WAD. This is the base collection of data that's loaded for the game and contains all its assets, including sound, sprites and levels, and you never edit this directly. In fact, most map editing tools have checks in them to make sure that you don't accidentally modify them. Instead, what you build with your map editor is a PWAD, or patch WAD, which contains just the lumps that you want to replace. If you're just making a single level, then it's likely that all that will be in your PWAD is the map 01 mark and the level lumps that follow it. Here's an example. If you start up Doom 2 from the command line with no extra arguments, it will play the normal iWAD, Doom2.wad. On starting the first level on the easiest setting, the game finds the map 01 lumps to find in the WAD, which formed the familiar arrow-shaped stairs and small corridors of entryway, and having played this level a million times by now, you can zoom through it in about 8 seconds. After that, the game loads the next map, Underhalls, from map 02, and things continue from there. What we want to do is load a custom level on top of map 01 so that we can play our own map. I've converted the map that I made in the first video to the old Doom format so that it can run here, and I've dropped it into the folder alongside the Doom 2 exe. If I open the file up in Slade, you can see that it contains only the map 01 marker and the lumps that make up the level data. Now, by telling Doom 2 to load it up as well with the minus file argument on the command line, what I'm doing is getting it to patch the relevant parts of the base Doom 2 iWAD with the lumps that I've defined. Therefore, when the game is started, it goes into my level instead, because that's now occupying the map 1 space. When the level is completed, the game will tally up the score, then move on to map 2, which hasn't been interfered with, and so you're kicked back to underhauls again. If the PWOD defined its map as map 02, which I can do by renaming the marker and then saving it, then the game would instead let map 01 be played normally before finding the replaced map 02 and using it in place of underhauls instead. Equally, you can have multiple levels in a PWOD by replacing map 01 and map 02 and whichever other levels you want to replace. Replacement of other lumps works in much the same way. If you include sounds, music or sprites in your PWOD with the same names as those in the iWOD, then you'll see those showing up in the game. Here I've replaced a few sounds. I began by using the original Doom2.exe to show the theory, but modern source ports like GZ Doom work in the same way. You can specify the extra WADs to load on the command line, or alternatively just by dragging the WAD to gzdoom.exe in your desktop. Unlike Doom2.exe, which always defaults to the same iWOD, Doom2.wad, GZ Doom will ask you for the iWOD to use before loading the PWOD. Alternatively, you can specify that from the command line too with the minus iWOD parameter. You can even specify multiple WADs to use in cases like when you want to load a custom level with one or more gameplay patches that replace graphics. Any lumps specified by WADs earlier in the list will be overridden by later ones. 
However, loading multiple wads can get unwieldy from the command line, so you can instead use a front end to manage your wad collection and specify which ones should be loaded in what order. A couple of popular ones are Doom Launcher and ZDL. While talking about wads, there are also one and a half more Doom mod formats worth mentioning. The most popular of these is the PK3 format, which originated from Quake 3 and is actually identical to a zip file, just under a different name. Modern source ports of Doom can load data from these instead of a WAD file. They contain a hierarchy of folders with standard names like textures, sounds, sprites and maps, and when you load one with the minus file parameter, the source port will apply the files in these folders as patches to the iWAD in the same way as it would for a PWAD. There are a couple of advantages to using this format. It's nice not to have to worry about the order of lumps and markers in a file, and you also don't need a specialist tool to edit it. All you have to do is add your files to folders and then zip them up and feed them to your source port of choice. Of course, the drawback is that such files won't work on the original game or strictly vanilla compatible ports. The other format is PK7, which works in the same way as PK3, except it's compressed by the more efficient 7Z algorithm as implemented by 7Zip. Compressing a Doom mod as a PK7 can make it a lot smaller, but it comes with the trade-off that it's slower to retrieve data from it, and I haven't actually ever seen it used in practice. So that's what's happening when you make a Doom WAD file, and how Doom loads them up. If you're making mods that aren't targeting the original game, you can also include many different custom lumps in your WAD that alter the behaviour of the game, the text intermissions, and the layout of the level list, and so on. If there's anything that you'd particularly like me to cover for WAD editing, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to explain it as best as I can. In the meantime, please do give Doom Mapping a try, and join the nicest community about a game from hell that I've ever been part of.